glad you came to celebrate tonight. But I came to celebrate the King of Kings. Yes, amen. And the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Lord. I wonder tonight, has God been good to anybody in the house? Yes. Amen. All the time. I don't know if that bottle of water is going to work or not. It's about to fall off that podium there. Tonight I began to, not tonight, through the week I, I began to feel the leading of the Holy Ghost. And it would be what you would call a typical, this time of the year, um, message, I guess you could say, with a twist on it. Because that's just how God rolls and reveals things in my mind. We're going to stand for the initial reading of the Word, which is in Luke, the 11th chapter and the 9th verse. And I'll give Sister Caitlin just a moment to put it up there. There she goes. She's doing an excellent job tonight, Philly. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Thank you, Jesus. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. Thank you, Lord. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. And before you're sitting, I'm going to ask Brother Joseph to pray over the message tonight. Jesus, you may be seated. But just because it's a Wednesday night does not mean we're going to be quiet. I got the Holy Ghost on a Wednesday night. Wednesday nights are special to me for that for that reason right there. Oh. The Greek word right there in that seek is zeteo. And it means to search, to desire, to seek in order to find, to aim at, or to strive after, Brother James. Now tonight, Sister Anna and everybody else, I don't know what you came to do. All right. And I don't know what you're doing in this season of your life. But I've come to seek after the Lord. Amen. You see, in this season, I'm striving after and I'm aiming at the Lord, Brother Sean. Amen. Tonight, I wonder if we can't all come together and be found desiring the Lord in this season. You see, I felt a strong mandate from the Lord come over me to encourage the church. Seek me. I said, seek me, me being God. Amen. The word of the Lord, and I didn't give you this one, would have you to believe and have us to, to believe in faith. The Lord is with you. Emmanuel, God with us. The Lord is with you while you be with Him. And if you seek Him, there's that word again, if you seek Him, He will be found of you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But the counterpart of that is, but, there's usually a but in there, and it stinks. <laughs> and it's big. But if you forsake Him, he will forsake you. Now, I don't know about y'all tonight, but I don't want to be forsaken by the King of all kings. But you know what? Everything that says, Lord, Lord, is not going to enter in. If you seek Him, you will find Him. You forsake Him on Monday, He will forsake you on Monday. 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9. Somebody say, wise men seek Him. Wise men seek Him. Hopefully we're all wise tonight. Hopefully we're all wise. The word of the Lord in 1 Chronicles 16 and 9 says, Sing unto Him, sing psalms unto Him. Talk ye 
of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Tonight, is that you? Then let your heart rejoice in this season and praise you tonight. Seek the Lord and his strength, not your own. Seek his face when? Continually. Not when everything is all good. Not when everything is all bad. Sometimes you got to seek him with a sacrifice of praise. Every time my feet step foot on this platform, everything is not all good. But you know what? It is all good. I said it is all good. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. How do you seek him tonight? How do you seek him tonight? In silence? When Brother Joseph and Sister Shana got together, it was kind of my matchmaking skill there. I was at Momo's. McGregor and, and Randolph, Shauna was there, and Joseph was coming by to, we were all going to go to a movie, not her, she was not included in that. She said, who is that? Pull him out. She was not silent in that pursuit. I said, that's Joseph. I think you should come outside and talk to him. And I got to looking and she wasn't nowhere to be found. And I thought, well, where did she go? She was getting herself together. But she did not sit there in silence. And anybody that knows Brother Joseph knows that when she was showing him attention, he did not sit there in silence either. So I ask you tonight, how have you come into this house to seek the living God? Sitting down with your hands folded up under you? You can't seek God like that. The Word of God tells me if these should hold their peace, the disciples. You see, the Pharisees in this passage, when everybody started worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, when He come riding in on that colt, they wanted Him to sit down, Brother Corey. Tell Him to sit down, Jesus. And Jesus himself answered, I tell you, that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. If they stop rejoicing, if they stop praising, if they stop seeking the living God, then the stones would cry out. I don't know about y'all, but God has been too good to me to, for me to allow a stone to cry out in my place. Back to 1 Chronicles, the 16th chapter and the 28th verse. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. <laughs> what went on around here Sunday morning? We were seeking the Lord. I said we were seeking the Lord. We were desiring the Lord. We were striving and aiming at the Lord. And I think that we hit the target. An overwhelming experience is what the bishop preached about. And that's exactly what we received as it not been recorded. 2 Chronicles 15 and 1. Somebody say, wise men seeking. And that's me tonight. Is that you? Yes. Collectively, that is us. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah, all praise, all and Benjamin, 
The Lord is with you. Black Sign Pentecostal Church. I tell you tonight, the Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. Tonight, how do you seek the living God? How do you seek him tonight? But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long season, anybody ever been in a long season? <laughs> in your face, enemy. Now for a long season, Israel has been without the true God. Can you just imagine that tonight? No, sir. You see, it says the true God. They had allowed other small, lowercase gods to come into their lives. And without a teaching priest and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord, God of Israel, the true God, and sought him when they went seeking after him. Guess what? He was found. <laughs> I said he was found. The Hebrew word right there for trouble is tesar, meaning narrow or tight, affliction, anguish, distress, Sorrow, tribulation. Anybody know what that feels like? Yes. To be in a tight spot? Yes. To be in a narrow spot? Yes. To be in a tribulation? To be in a trial? Yes. Anybody ever been there? Yes. You see, these people needed saving. These people needed deliverance, Brother James, from their trouble, their affliction, and their distresses. Tonight, I wonder if we would be honest with one another and answer yes without raising our hands. Have you ever created your own storm? I don't have enough hands to raise to be truthful behind this pulpit. You've created your own trouble. You've created your own distress. Can I tell you tonight, anytime you cease or you stop from seeking, desiring, striving at, or aiming at the one true living God, you set the stage for trouble and affliction and distress. It is so. Is that you tonight? No show of hands. Will you allow me to encourage you tonight? Come on. Uh, yes. Turn and seek the one true living yes. God tonight. Go. For he is here. Yes. I said he is here. Emmanuel, God with us, has been born. He is here tonight. And that in itself is a miracle. That God would look on a race of people that was not of his own. And he said, hey, <laughs> those people will seek me. It's not just for the Jewish people tonight. I love the Jewish people. We're grafted into that. But it's not just for them tonight. And that's a miracle in this place. That we can worship the living God and we feel the living God in this place. So the words of that song rings loud and clear and true tonight. A miracle can happen in this place. Because it already has. Many of us sitting here tonight, we are miracles. We shouldn't be here tonight. After everything that we've gone through, we should be, our minds should be lost. Again tonight, how are you seeking the one true living God? That's to me too. Earlier in the week, after that powerhouse service, 
Monday morning on the way to work, I'm, I'm praying. And, uh, you know, a few nights ago, the, the message was a willing vessel. And it was, I talked about the potter and the clay. And I'm talking to God and kind of getting emotional already. And I just passed the church Monday morning early. And I said, God, I began to, to, to just talk to Him. Just like I'm talking to y'all right now. And I said, God, I surrender my all. <laughs> I lay down my will for yours. And I began to say, God, you are the potter and I am your clay. And you know what he said to me? No, you haven't. No, you haven't laid down your will, Ben. Until you pray this. Until you intercede for this person. You have not submitted. You're not seeking after my will. You're seeking after your own will. All right. Well, you know what Ben did? And I give God all the glory for this. I sucked it up. And I interceded. All right. All right. I sought the living God, Sister Christy. Yes. And you know what? And in those times, there was no peace to him that went out. They had trouble all around them, Brother Stephen. They had distress that they had created. Tribulation and trial that they had created. They were not found seeking after God. They had forsaken. And go figure, there was no peace to him that went out. You see, not seeking God will land you right there in that state of mind, no peace. And you can fake it all you want to. You can fake it all you want to. Having no peace in your life, it shows all over your face. But can I tell you that you tonight, if you'll turn and seek the true living God, peace will flow like a river. Jesus. Nor to him that came in, but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. Not just everybody, Sister Momar, but it says all the inhabitants. And nation was destroyed of nation and city of city. You see where you're found not seeking God, there's no peace, there's vexation, and there is destruction in your land. Hello, world of 2022. Can we get a, a hint here? For God did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong therefore. And let not your hands be weak. Black Sign Pentecostal Church. Tonight I come to you. Be ye strong therefore. And let not your hands be weak. Don't let your hands down in that moment of worship. Keep them arms lifted up. Seeking after the living God tonight. On a Wednesday night. For your work shall be rewarded. And we're in the season of that reward. Look it up. 5783. We entered into it in the Hebraic year back in September. And it's a transitional year. And it's also a reward year. A year of rewarding. We're going out of one seventh year cycle and we entered into another one. We did that here in this church without us even realizing it. The Lord began to work on our bishop. He knew what time it was. Your word shall be rewarded. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage. He took courage tonight. I speak courage to everyone listening and not listening. I speak courage to you anyhow. And he put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah, out of praise and Benjamin. You see those idols, those little gods, they have no place in praise, Brother Corey. Right. I said they have no place in praise and you got to deal with them. Tonight, what is that abominable idol? 
anything that puts God in second place. He might tolerate it for a little while, but there's coming a day when he'll prove to you, you shall have no other gods before me. Seek ye first the living God. Seek him tonight. Above all tonight. So King Asa has put away all of the abominable idols and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim. And you know what else they done? They renewed the altar of the Lord. I believe tonight that the altar of the Lord in this place has been renewed. <laughs> I said it's been renewed tonight. All because of a wise man seeking after God. And that altar that was before the porch of the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin. I said he gathered them. What do you think we've done here tonight? We have gathered together. And the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon. For they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month. In the 15th year of the reign of Asa. And right there in that third month, theologians believe that it is highly likely and highly probable that that was the time of the Feast of Weeks. Anybody knows? Anybody know what that is? That's the feast of the festival of Pentecost. Yeah. That they began that turnaround. Yeah. Now that ought to light a fire under you tonight. Yeah. It was at the time of the feast or festival of Pentecost. Thank you. Thank you. That they began to seek after the living God. Yes. Yes. And they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil which they had brought. 700 oxen and 7,000 sheep. How do you seek God tonight? What is your offering tonight? And yes, we all know that that is monetary. But what have you offered God tonight? Have you offered Him any praise since that blowout service that we had Sunday morning? Have you given Him a second thought? Tonight is He found in second place in your life. God. Wise men seeking. Verse 12. And they entered into the covenant. They entered into vows. To do what? To seek the Lord God of their fathers. With all their heart. And with all their soul. Tonight are you seeking him with what's left over? Are you bowing down? To the one true God tonight. And giving him your whole heart. Seeking after him. I wonder how well this would go over. In modern day times. That whosoever would not seek. The Lord God. Would not desire him. Would not aim at him. Would not strive after. Huh. Huh. Should be put to death. Whether small or great. Whether man or woman. And they swear to the Lord. With a little quiet voice. Because that's just how good God is speaking. Not my word of God. Not what I read. Not during that festival of Pentecost. It says with a loud voice. And with shout. Not just with the ones that said, hey God, here's my body and you just take over. All of Judah rejoice at the oath. I long, just like my bishop, I long for the day that we all yield our bodies to God in this place. And begin to rejoice in this place under the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, it's good. Mm. Try 
that you might like it. I know we may look crazy, or I may look crazy at times, but I admonish you tonight, try it. You will like it. For they had sworn with all their heart, they had something to rejoice about because they sought after the living God with all their heart and sought Him with their whole desire. And He was what? He was found of them. Anybody need God to step into your situation tonight? Anybody need God to step into your heart and into your life tonight? Then I admonish you to seek the living God. He will be found of you. And the Lord, when He was found of them, when they were seeking Him, the Lord gave them rest round about. Tonight, are you tired of fighting that same old, same old? Seek ye the living God. First. Seek ye the living God if you want that rest. Verse 18. And He, Asa, brought into the house of God the things... Wait a minute. Where did he bring them? He brought them into the house of God, Sister Ty. That his father had dedicated and that he himself had dedicated. Silver and gold and vessels. He pledged his offering. He didn't just pledge it, he brought it. Because he was seeking after the one true living God. Tonight... How have you come to this sanctuary in this season of conception seeking after God? Can I tell you that your presence is just not enough? You're in the right place. And I don't mean that with any kind of cruelty right there at all. I love each and every one of you. But our presence is not enough. He brought the silver and the gold and the vessels. And there was no more war. That sounds like heaven on earth, Brother Chris. There was no more war until the five and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa. And if you will, everybody stand. And we're not going to have music, so the musicians can, can go down front to, and make your way up front if you don't mind. Matthew, the second chapter, and the first verse. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, All right. saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Tonight, do you know where that king is at. Do you know where that king is at tonight? He is in this place tonight. The word says that he inhabits the praises of his people. Have you done your part at praising, at seeking after God? Then he is here. He is here. Saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. You see, wise men seek him, yes. Right. But wise men, they don't stop with the seeking. Right. Wise men worship him. Come on. I see it. What does your worship look like tonight? Weakened hands. Hands lifted up. The word mandates it all through it. He's been so good to us. And even if you're in a, in a tricky spot and you're looking for Jesus to come in the scene. I'm looking up, Brother Corey. I'm looking for Jesus, Sister Ain't Faye. Tonight, He is here. That ought to do something. You see, these wise men, just like us at times, and women, we're going to throw that out there too. 
And all the men in here said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> you see, these wise men, their flesh sent them looking for the king of kings in the most typical, logical, and reasonable place in the palace. Mm. Oftentimes, when we seek God, we begin looking in the places and situations that just make sense. Right? But you see, the God that I serve, He doesn't make sense. And that's not a diss to God. I'm thankful that the God I serve does not make sense. If He made sense, then I can figure Him out. And if I can figure Him out, who would I seek? Who would I worship then if I served a God that made sense and that I can figure Him out before His work is complete? Self. Self. That's what I would worship. That's what I would worship. That's what I would seek after. That's what I would desire after. Self. Let that hit home tonight. What is that the prime definition of? Pride. Amen. Pride. Not conforming your will to the perfect will of God. Right. Right. Not being that, that lumpy piece of clay that just says, hey God, you know what you're doing. It sure does not look like it. But you know what you're doing. You don't make any sense. But I will be found seeking after you tonight. In this season. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. All of the foundation of peace was troubled with that king. You see, I'm sorry to bust your bubble and rain on the parade, but everyone is not going to be pleased when you start seeking after the living God. Everybody ain't going to be pleased with it. It's going to bring distress and trouble into the lives of people. Will that stop you? Because seeking after God makes you look a little bit different. It separates you. It's a full-time job, Brother Jordan. There is no halfway. There is no halfway in seeking God. Either you're seeking Him or you're forsaking Him. If He's number two in your life tonight, you have forsaken Him. You know you better than anybody else knows you. Other than God. He knows tonight if you've hit a rough spot. While looking for the King of Kings. While looking for your Savior to be born in the flesh. He knows if you have forsaken Him privately. When nobody else really knows. God knows. But I encourage you tonight. He is here. Emmanuel. God with us. He is here tonight. He is here tonight. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. He wanted to know. You see, some people want to know because they like to stir up trouble. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, Judea, art not the least among the princes of Judea. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule over my people. The ones that are seeking after him. When they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, when they saw the light that shined in darkness, they rejoiced 
with exceeding great joy. You see, when wise men go to seeking after the one true living God, He is found. Can I tell you tonight that Emmanuel, God was there. Even on a Wednesday night. Even on a Wednesday night. Even when your life doesn't look like what you want it to. Don't forget, Brother Corey, God doesn't make sense. He's on a whole different level. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother. The ones that were seeking him, the wise men. And they fell down and they worshipped him. Right. And when they had opened their treasures, they, prese they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You see, they didn't show up empty-handed. Right. Right. Because wise men seek him. Right. Have you shown up here tonight empty-handed? You can turn it all around tonight. You can turn it all around. Emmanuel, God with us. He is here. He is here. That should encourage us in this season. No matter what you're going through. No matter what you're facing. He is here. Brother Corey, tomorrow on the workforce, remember He is here. He is here. When you get behind that slow moving traffic and they're driving you nuts in the morning, remember, He is here. Amen. Ben, remember, He is here. Emmanuel, God with us is here. You see, there's something about someone that is found seeking the Lord. There's just something different about it. The ones that are actually seeking after, pursuing, striving at. The word says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Right, right. Diligently. On my bad day, I'm seeking you, God. Right. When your will is ripping me to shreds, I'm going to seek you. Though you slay me, yet I serve you. Yet I seek after you. Though we be in a season of unanswered prayers, I'm going to seek after you, living God. I'm going to strive after you. Yes. How desperate are you tonight? How desperate is your family? How desperate is your church family? God is fixing to come back. And he's not coming back after a people that has found forsaken him. There is no halfway making it. There is no participation trophies when it comes to the entering in the gates of heaven. Seek after him tonight. Because wise men seek him. Jesus. And I want to leave you tonight with one more passage of scripture that touched me this afternoon, this morning. Acts 13 and 22. And when he had removed him, being Saul, he raised up unto them David to be their king. Why did he? Why was Saul removed? He had forsaken the one true living God. He had forsaken the one true living God, and it may have taken a while for that to be exposed, but it was. And to have the anointing ripped from you. To have that spirit ripped from you. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. No matter what you're facing tonight. Giving up and forsaking God. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. But God, he raised up unto them David. To be their king. To whom also he gave testimony and said. I have found David. The son of Jesse. A man after mine own heart 
A man seeking me. Seeking me. Putting me first, Brother Zach. Seeking me. Which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed, can you imagine for a moment seeking after God so strongly and so passionately? Of this man's seed hath God according to his promise raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Jesus. God chose to be born in the flesh to a line of the one that was found seeking after him wholeheartedly, day in, day out, no matter who was around him. More than anything else, he had sold out to the one true living God. He wasn't found forsaking God. Tonight I can only imagine, I wish you could as well. What could God conceive in you and birth through you if you would seek Him first with your whole heart? Can I tell you tonight that God's coming back? He's coming back. I ask you tonight, Imagine that in your eye, in your head. What God could really conceive in you and then one day, one season, birth through you if you would just seek Him with your whole heart, putting your will aside. Just laying down at His feet tonight at this altar and saying, God, I surrender all tonight. Y'all go ahead and come to the music. I surrender my all tonight to you, living God. My family is worth it. My church family is worth it. I'm through forsaking you, God. I'm through putting you in second place. I'm going to be found seeking after you tonight. I want to be known as that wise man. And I have a confession tonight. I know the man that you see behind this pulpit is Joseph Benjamin Riddle. And I'm not saying that it's a David thing. But because of some people in my heritage, in my lineage, that sought after God when it was unpopular to go to that kind of church to be filled with the Holy Ghost they stayed I said they stayed they sought after God with their whole heart Jesus oftentimes the women in my family went to church without their spouse. My Aunt Jewel Hollingsworth that started all of this up with us. My mama put. But they saw after God. If that's you tonight, you keep seeking after God. He's going to burst something through you. That will one day testify. with my whole heart. I get to stand up behind this pulpit and minister this word. I give God all the glory for it, but I give my heritage glory for it too because they stay and they sought the living God. They didn't forsake it. They didn't forsake His ways, His mandates, His command. They didn't say
miracle can happen. A miracle can happen.